I stumbled upon a quote this week by Barbara Brown Taylor that changed my approach to this sermon. Initially, I was going to do the creation care thing that is often done. I was going to point out just how much we, the church, have missed the mark in terms of caring for creation and then focus on a call to do much better. And while we could always do better, these words convinced me of the wisdom of another approach. What if people were invited to come tell what they already know of God instead of to learn what they are supposed to believe? And what if they were blessed for what they are doing in the world instead of chastened for not doing more at church? This morning, I invite us to be mindful of the beauty of creation and to celebrate all the ways in which we do care for it well. And then from that place of gratitude and joyfulness, be open to hearing something that motivates us perhaps to do more, to love creation generously and actively. So rather than talk this morning about all the ways that our ancestors of faith used theology to defend behaving in ways that were harmful for creation, I want to lift up the wisdom found in our mystical tradition. The writings we have from various Christian mystics reveal a love for the created natural world. And one such mystic was St. Francis of Assisi. Francis preached creation care long before our day. In or around the year 1224, Francis wrote a poem called The Canticle of the Sun, in which he names the sun as brother, the moon as sister, and the earth as mother. He writes, Glory to you, my Lord, for brother wind, and for air, and for cloud, and for serene sky. St. Francis affirmed our relationship to creation by suggesting in his canticle that we are all kin with all of creation. He preached the Christian doctrine that the world was created good and beautiful by God, and he believed that all creatures should praise God, and that the people have a duty to protect and enjoy nature, both of stewards of God's creation and as creatures ourselves. I hear in this canticle a call to love in action. Dr. Sally McFaig, my constructive theology professor, put it this way, the world is God's body. That is to say that the world and everything in it is shot through with God's presence. This affirms beautifully the Christian insistence on an embodied spiritual life modeled in the way of Jesus, and the mystic's intuition of the sacred connection that we have to creation. We live into a spiritual and religious tradition that for centuries has affirmed the beauty and the value of God's good creation. And we are called to celebrate that and to love creation by actively caring for it. In a book called The Essential Mystics, The Soul's Journey into Truth, Andrew Harvey presents an anthology of the writings of various mystics from across the religious traditions. 
Each section he names as the way of some charism. Buddhism he describes as the way of clarity. Islam, the way of passion. And Christianity, he calls the way of love in action. And I wonder if he had the words from this morning's text in mind when he chose that way of describing the Christian path. The way of love in action. For at essence, 1 John, a letter most likely written at Ephesus in a style similar to that of the Gospel of John, and about a hundred years or so after Jesus' ministry came to an end, is an exhortation to stand for truth and practice love in action. It's a call to practice our faith and not just talk about it. It's a call to let our lives speak, to borrow Parker Palmer's famous turn of phrase. And it asserts that because Jesus loved people so much that he died for their redemption and flourishing, people should love with the same devotion. The author of the letter asks, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. The overall message of 1 John insists that God is love And the excerpt we heard this morning calls us to love in action. St. Francis invites us to embrace the idea that we are all deeply related to all the elements of creation. Would we behave more reverently if we were mindful of this connection more often? If we saw the earth as mother, the way that Francis did? What if we embrace this deeply relational worldview in the same way that indigenous peoples have always done? In Harvey's book, he includes a Chinook blessing that talks about this kinship. We call upon the forests, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and the pine and the cedar, and we ask them to show us the way. This litany calls upon all aspects of creation for wisdom and inspiration as to the way. That is the way of love in action. And if we accept this premise of deep kinship with creation, then this morning's text convicts us. We must love the earth and the environment with the same love that Jesus extends to us, a love that is generous and alive and active. Here at OUC, we engage with community partners to extend that love in a variety of ways. We have embraced the idea that collaborating with other groups to share God's goodness and to extend ministry not only makes sense, but also allows us to do more than we could do on our own. One of our community partners is Faith in the Common Good, an interfaith organization that promotes environment and creation care initiatives throughout Canada. And recently, as you know, OUC was awarded a Greening Sacred Spaces Certificate for the work that we have done to adopt practices that are more faithful to the call to love God's creation. So, 
it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the pulpit Catherine Forster, the Ottawa animator for Faith and the Common Good. As Carolyn mentioned, I work at Faith and the Common Good, which is a national interfaith network of religious and spiritual communities who understand the earth as a sacred gift. We are convinced that our faith traditions are a key source of wisdom in the great spiritual quest of our time, healing our beloved earth. We believe that we are all called to re-envision the way that we live and consider the sacredness of the earth, which is a gift from God to us. Caring for creation, therefore, is an important action that all religious and spiritual communities have been called to undertake. I am so honored today to be part of your Earth Day service, so thank you so much for inviting me. Faith in the Common Good operates through various chapters in cities across Canada, and the Ottawa chapter, which works on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation, has been helping out local faith communities for the past 10 years. And recently, we've been honored to be working with the Orleans United Green Team. Orleans United is a great example of a church that has made an effort to consider care for creation in all aspects, including energy, waste, worship services like today, and other initiatives. Last year, we were thrilled to be able to recognize your work through the Greening Sacred Spaces Certificate Program, and we're really happy to hear that you will be trying for the next level this year. So congratulations. Our organization offers various programs, such as this certificate program, to help motivate and recognize our members who are working on Care for Creation initiatives in their place of worship and also to encourage parishioners to consider Care for Creation actions in their home. Here in Ottawa, we are working on promoting a new program for outdoor greening. Half of Canada's wildlife species are in decline due to habitat loss, climate change, and pollution. And cities can actually play an important part in helping change this decline. You may think that cities are not an important habitat for wildlife, but for example, 20% of the world's bird species are found in cities. And yes, rich biodiversity in cities is possible, and it not only benefits wildlife, but also creates a more resilient ecosystem that helps us with water, clean water, clean air, and soil. Here in Ottawa, we have a head start with great green spaces, but we can add to this by providing more linkages for pollinator corridors, more migration rest stops, which offer native trees and shrubs for birds, and less exotic turf and lawn that reduces biodiversity. Rich habitat supports native bees that pollinate our flowers and food, which means we can be less reliant on European honeybees. Trees and shrubs and rain gardens can also help with water retention and flood prevention. There are many options for helping green up both faith community properties and gardens at home. Consider healthier lawn that mixes in clover and other cold weather grasses that not only increase biodiversity but are also drought resistant. Or add a few rain barrels to your property like Orleans United has. Or ensure that the animals that you purchase do not have neonicotinoids. Remember, any step, whether big or small, does make a difference. We at Faith in the Common Good are here to help you with your Care for Creation projects. And we know that there are some exciting possible garden plans here. So we'd love to support that if we can find the funding. Think of us as your local resource to help inspire and answer questions, point you in the right direction, or connect you with the best local or online sustainable and ecological resources. We also want to celebrate and spread the news of your successes. At Faith in the Common Good, what connects all of us members and congregants alike is this desire to care for creation, which is an ecological wisdom that echoes through the various world's religious and spiritual traditions. This green rule, as we like to call it, reminds us that at the core for all of us is this awareness of the sacredness of creation. Let us help lead the way in stewardship, which supports sustainability of life on our planet. Thank you. My friends, the call to love one another extends beyond humanity to include all of creation. Mystics like St. Francis knew it. Our indigenous brothers and sisters know it. And at our core, I think we know it too. 
As disciples of the Jesus way, we are called to an active love of the earth and to care for creation. And with God's inspiration and guidance, let's have our behavior and our choices continue to stem from that loving and reverent relationship, deepening our efforts for creation's care and flourishing. May it be so. Amen.